Given the vector valued function r of t, we want to determine the limit as t approaches infinity of r of t. To do this, we need to determine the limit as t approaches zero of the x, y, and z components. And now we consider each of the three limits. Let's begin with the x component, where we have the limit as t approaches zero of two e to the power of t. We can determine this limit by performing direct substitution, which gives us two e to the power of zero, e to the zero is one, indicating the limit is equal to two. We now know the limit as t approaches zero of the vector valued function r of t is equal to a vector in which the x component is equal to positive two. And now let's consider the limit of the y component. We have the limit as t approaches zero of sine t divided by negative two t. This should remind us of a special limit, which is the limit as t approaches zero of sine t divided by t is equal to one. To help us determine the limit though, notice we don't have t in the denominator, we have negative two t, but we can write this as the limit as t approaches zero of, let's write it as negative one half times sine t divided by t. This should help us recognize that the limit is equal to negative one half times one, or just negative one half which gives us the y component of the vector. And now let's consider the limit of the z component, which is the limit as t approaches zero of the quantity t minus two squared, which once again we can determine this limit by performing direct substitution, which gives us the square of negative two, which is equal to positive four, positive four is the z component of the vector. So now we know the limit as t approaches zero of the vector valued function r of t is equal to the vector in which the x component is two, the y component is negative one half, and the z component is four. I hope you found this helpful.